Hi there, this is Bob Kuhn with Binary Hammer, and in this short video I will show you how to add multiple inheritance to Objective-C classes. Now we all know that Objective-C doesn't natively support that, so what I'm actually going to show you is how to simulate that inheritance as if it was native. That is, when looking at the code and watching it run, it appears as though it supports multiple inheritance natively. Now this video is going to be a sort of live coding demo, and I've prepared a very simple example project that illustrates the points. I have a class called base class that has a method called sum method, and all it does is display an I am here message. I have another class called class A that inherits from base class that has another method called some other method, and again, all it does is display an I am here message. And in view controller, I have a simple example of that use, and the output is down here. All very normal stuff so far. But let's say I have another class called class one that I really want to be part of class A, but the problem is that class A already inherits from base class, so how do you solve that problem? Well, you could design around it, uh, redesign and re-architect your code so it doesn't need to have that multiple inheritance functionality. That's a totally viable solution, and I thoroughly recommend pursuing that option before you invoke what I'm about to show you. Uh, you could also duplicate the code, copy it from class one, paste it into class A, and away you go. That is possible, but obviously not recommended, and anyone reviewing that pull request should reject it outright anyway. You could also create an instance of class one in class A, and create wrapper methods for everything that you want exposed from class one. Yeah, that works, but it's a lot of boilerplate and extra code and lots of extra effort, so it's not ideal. Or you can do what I'm about to show you. It does involve creating an instance, but it does it in a much better way. Okay, let's take a look at class one. Here is the method that I want to be really uh, part of class A, and all it does is display an I am here message for this example. And ultimately, what I want to do is this. Have class A call some completely different method directly. But obviously that's not going to work because the compil compiler is complaining because it doesn't know about that yet. So one way to solve that is to create a protocol from class one that optionally expo exposes some completely different method and have class A conform to that. Like so. And you can see that the compiler is happy. Uh, but you will not be because when you run this, it will crash instantly because some completely different method isn't part of class A. And there's the crash that we all know and love and have seen a zillion times before. What you need to do is take advantage of the runtime mechanism and implement forwarding target for selector. This is called by the runtime as a very last ditch attempt to handle the selector sent to an object when it sees that the instance can handle it natively. If you don't implement it, it will return nil, hence the crash, but here's what you can do to prevent that. In class A, you can create an instance of class one. And in the init, which you need to create, you can actually allocate class one there. And finally, override forwarding target for selector. And this is where the magic happens. What you do is check to see if class one can respond to that selector. If it can, return that object back to the runtime so that the runtime passes all messages to that object instead. If it can't handle it, return nil and the crash will happen as normal. But now when you return the object, you are happy, the compiler is happy, and the user is happy because the functionality is now being evoked and there's the evidence of that there. And that's literally all you need to do. All of the heavy lifting is handled by forwarding target for selector. But there is a caveat to that though. Uh, when you use a method like is kind of class on class A. Obviously class A is not kind of class class one because it inherits from base class. Uh, let me just show you that here. Class A is not a kind of class one, which is what we expected. 
but what you can do is override is kind of class. And I'll show you that here. And what you do here is if class coming in is equal to class one's class, then say yes, we are kind of class, class one. Otherwise, return the super. So that when you run your code, it will now think that class A is a kind of class one. And there it is here. But with great power comes great responsibility, so you have to be very careful when you use is kind of class in this way. Your code might assume that the object passing you're, you're passing in is actually class one when it actually may not be. It might be like an incomplete class A, nay, class one. So you have to be very careful and structure your code ac accordingly so it doesn't assume too much of class A when it thinks it's actually class one. So you have to be very careful with that. A better way and a safer way is using conforms to protocol instead. We've already set up the class one protocol that class A conforms to, so this will say it does conform to class one, which is down here. And if you noticed that some completely different method, the, the code signature for that, is duplicated in class one. So since we already have a protocol, what you can do is just have class one conform to that. So now you can create all of your method signatures in that protocol and you don't have to duplicate them in class one. And the compiler is still happy. It's not crashing. It still does conform to class one protocol. It still is of kind of class one. Everyone's happy, no code duplication. Everything is lightweight, everything works. And that's all. Uh, use wisely, obviously. Uh, there's uh, folks who don't look too well on swizzling. I think it's okay in this case. Obviously your mileage may vary, but it does have its use. I don't think it's taking advantage of or abusing the runtime functionality. You're just leveraging it to do what you need to do. And that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. Thank you very much for watching. The link to the example project is in the description below. So please take a look at that if you're so inclined. Thank you and see you next time.